why I believe IndyCar is the best form of motorsport in the whole entire world and yes that includes the F1. Let's get right into it. So this video is going to be a little discussion video so I've kind of I've I've kind of been discussing this for a few people, like a few people have left comments on my I made a previous video a few weeks ago talking about some of the negative things about IndyCar, I'll leave that in the description or in the description. So I've been talking to quite a few of you guys in the comments and also some of my real life friends about about this over the probably past month or even past year about why IndyCar racing is probably one of the most c competitive and just fun sports to watch. So. First of all, for anyone who doesn't know, IndyCar, race, IndyCar is an open wheel racing spec series. Spec series is important because I think that's pro one of the primary reasons IndyCar is such a good series is because it's a spec series and a spec, ser a spec series is a... So in IndyCar's case, they have a chassis provided by Dallara and they have, they have engine suppliers Honda and Chevy. So like the, I, the budget, the budget of an, of an IndyCar team is about... 3 million on the low end to 10 million on the high end compared to F1 what I what I believe now with the budget cap it's something like 150 million but before the budget cap it was like 300 million it was absurd so but even now even now with the budget cap in place F1 still has an absurd budget and that's kind of what is cool about indie cars everyone's kind of on the same playing field there's some advantage big teams have but for the most part everything is completely fair no one really has a humongous advantage of course you're never going to be able to make it 100 percent fair but you know that's kind of part of it i think one of indycar's biggest advantages is the how unpredictable the races are the races are chaotic like for example the first the first season opener at St. Peterburg was just was insane. I mean, some people didn't like the amount of crashes there was, but the intenseness of all the there was so many fit like you know for like for half for the first half of the race, everyone thought Roman Grosjean was gonna win it, and then and then Scott McLaughlin overtook him. So then it was like, oh, Scott McLaughlin is in it now, and then you know, and then th they both crashed out, and then you know, Pato Award was oh, Pato Award's gonna win it. But then Pato Award had some problem with his car, and then Mark Erickson won it. It was just so chaotic. It was it was so unpredictable? The pitch strat the pitch strategies are so kind of radical. There's there's only two tire compounds, but because they do refueling, it adds so much level to it. You know, fuel strategy. There's been so many like historic races on like especially on ovals. That's kind of where fuel strategy really comes into play. Like on the 500, there's been so many races where like you know fuel strategy has come into play. Like you know uh, drivers have gone over the over the radio and be like, oh we're losing this race, we're gonna lose. And their engineers are like, trust me, we got a fuel strategy, it's gonna work. And then it, it plays out, and then it it's just really amazing. Them kind of them kind of races. And then what also ties into it is the amount of action involved in the races. So I did I did a little Google search about this before I started recording this video. So in, in 2021, the amount of passes was 3,526. And then I compared that to, in, to F1. In F1 in 2021, they had a total number of 599 passes. And F1 has... I, and then I know people are going to say, well, IndyCar has more, more drivers. But IndyCar... IndyCar has less races, more drivers, but F1 has more races and less drivers and they have less overtakes, what doesn't make any sense. And then, so then in 2022, IndyCar had 5,881 passes compared to F1's 785. That's insane that IndyCar has that much passing. It is just ridiculous. And then to add to that is what I've kind of noticed because I, I am a very avid supporter of both IndyCar and F1. I've, I've always been an F1 supporter and I only recently got into IndyCar a few years ago. So the thing I notice about F1 too is like F1 cars are extremely weak. Like you've, how many, how many times did someone get front wing damage or something and then they had to pit for a new wing? It's insane. If you crash an F1, you're done. Where IndyCar, of course, they're still open wheel cars, but I think they've made the cars a little stronger. Like, how many times have we seen... We've seen people, like, I remember notably in 2021, was 2021, Mark X Erickson crashed at Nashville and he was airborne. He was literally airborne. And he went to the pits, changed all his car up, and he won the race. 
that would never happen in F1. If you if you crash in F1, you're done. Like how many times? Like especially last year, for example, like Kevin Magnussen, he he had so many problems with like you know getting front wing damage on the first lap. And once he once he pitted for that first lap, his race was done. And that I think that also has to do with the amount of pit options in F1 is so limited. Pretty much F1 has now just become like a one to two stop race and that's basically the extent to it. But IndyCar, there's so much variety. It's like, you know, some races is like, you know, they have the alternates. The alternates are the good tire. Sometimes the primary is the good tire. They have fuel strategy. The, the amount of action on track is just amazing. I just can't describe it in any other words. It's just amazing how, how, it, how it is. Another really good point is what a lot of people don't talk about is how affordable IndyCar is like IndyCar to go to a race it like for just general admission it's like I think I went to the Indy GP last year and it was like $35 entry per person what's that's just that's just ridiculous that's unheard of in F1 in F1 like general admission no grandstand tickets are like a few hundred like like probably like $200 and then if you want a grandstand ticket it's $400 compared to IndyCar it's like $30 grandstand not grand general admission and i don't know how much the grandstand tickets are but i imagine they're about 150 90 bucks they're not that much and the other thing i like about indycar 2 is if you've been if you're if you're a part of both of the communities the amount of toxicity in f1 is insane like if you if you want to if you want to like you know see some toxicity Go on Twitter and type in hashtag Team LH and the amount of toxicity towards Max Verstappen fans is insane and vice versa if you, you know, Team Max Verstappen, the amount of hate towards Lewis Hamilton and you know, I I will say I, I'm a pretty big Max Verstappen fan but I, I'm, not a, I'm not a Lewis hater, I, I respect Lewis, he's probably one of the best F1 drivers in F1 history. But there's so much hatred towards it. Where in IndyCar that doesn't exist. Like I, I like all I a lot. I know there's a lot of people like this. What just like a lot of different drivers. That you know, if you're a Scott Dixon fan, you're also, some people are also a New Garden fan, and they're also an Elio Castroneves fan. There isn't really, as far as I know, there isn't that much. Of course, there's some rivalry. There's some. There's some rivalry in some people, but the the amount of toxicity isn't as bad as F1, and it that could be to do with popularity, but it's just the F the IndyCar is such a welcoming community is kind of what I like about how IndyCar is. Like for example, I've seen a lot of posts recently, like you know people converting or not converting, but like starting to watch IndyCar and they post a Reddit post on the IndyCar Reddit, and they'll be like. I just started watching IndyCar. Can you have, can anyone give me some tips? And everyone's so welcome, and they're like, "Oh, welcome to the community." You know, here's this, this, here's some, here's a resource, here's this. I'm glad you're joining our great sport, and it's such a welcome and inviting community. And I would recommend you guys. I'm gonna leave a link to the IndyCar subreddit in the description actually because I just it's a really great place. There's some really great people over there. Another thing that's just really cool about IndyCar is I like the the more raw feeling of IndyCar. IndyCar is, of course there's ads on IndyCar, but the ads aren't 100% in your face. It's kind of, it kind of feels more like, you know, more old school racing. Like if you've, if you've ever been to like a local track and you know, just your, it's the local club race. That's kind of how IndyCar feels, but it feels like F1 at the same time. F1 always feels super like everything is perfect. Every single spot, like for example, let's, Let's just say there's a crash in in qualifying and someone destroys an advertising banner. Overnight, some crew will come and replace that advertisement banner and, you know, do that. But in IndyCar, if that kind of stuff happens, of course, you know, IndyCar will try and fix that banner. But if they don't have a banner that is that is like, well, that kind of sucks. I guess we don't have it. We, I guess that that's kind of messed up now. But that's kind of how Indy F1 just feels so perfect. Everything's perfect about it. IndyCar is not perfect, but it just feels better. And then IndyCar also has this more of a driver's sport too, because like they don't, for example, they don't have power steering. Everything is, it's a lot more, of course, d doing an F1 car is really, is really physical, but the physical challenge of not having power steering and 
being able to control the car and if you crash you have to let go of the wheel or you're gonna break your wrist it's a real physical challenge and then and then i think my last point what i'm gonna cover is ovals like i know there's a lot of you know more european fans that don't really understand ovals but if you're a european fan and you've you're starting to get into indycar i want you to watch an oval race like from the start until the end it's actually really interesting although it does feel like you know like nascar is just like they're going in circles but there's a lot of, there's a lot of strategic battles in in oval racing and it's definitely worth watching and once you understand how ovals work appreciating the art of an oval is impressive and i think that's what really separates indycar from f1 is the the ovals i really think ovals are cool and i know a lot of people a lot of Indy F1 fans think ovals are dangerous, but over the last few years, IndyCar has really innovated about how safe they are. Like, for example, if someone crashes on an oval, there's a medical team there within like 25 seconds. They are really fast. Their medical team and their safety features on the new IndyCar is, is just insane. It's probably the best medical team in the world, period. It's just amazing how how fast and in general over the last few years the cars have become so safe and i mean in f1 they're also extremely safe most levels of motorsports nowadays have extremely safe and fast cars but it it really just people no one really dies in motorsports anymore like of course there's obviously anomalies and if there's a bad crash then obviously there's a chance but it safety has really improved especially in indycar and that's kind of what a lot of people have against indycar is how dangerous it is they they're going upwards of 230 miles an hour on ovals, but chances are, unless it's like crazy, you're gonna people are gonna survive. No one's really died in a long time. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. This has kind of been a longer video, but I just kind of wanted to just talk and kind of get this kind of stuff off my chest. I've been thinking about this for a, for a long while, and I wanna I wanna see if you guys agree with me. If you if I didn't cover anything in this video, let me know, and I'll I'll probably try I'll try and look, I'll try and make maybe a follow up video if I didn't cover something. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.